Welcome again. We have half an hour for a parallel session. There's another session upstairs. What will happen after, we don't know. At, so, at some point, there will be dinner. But uh, in between, uh, we may have other plenaries, other sessions, other ceremonies. The organizers will tell us. One thing is certain. We are in this room for half an hour, and we will learn about the portfolio approach towards your career, how you can present yourself uh, fully in the way you are, your competences, your talents, maybe some gaps you need to fill. And there's a system developed uh, called Bester, and we have two colleagues, uh, Simone Ravaioli and Tom Black, who will explain. And I believe Tom starts. So you have the floor. And he stays right there. <laughs> Um, thank you. Thank you for um, the introduction. So I just want to uh, describe a little of the context of this uh, session and um, generally about electronic portfolios. Um, students are very bad at contextualizing their learning and their educational experience. If you ask them, what does the transcript represent, for example, um, they would just say something like, Oh, those were the courses I, were, I had to take to complete my degree. But if you ask them, well, why did you have to take those courses? Well, I don't know. That was selected for this degree. Um, so when it comes time for students to present themselves to whomever, whether it's an employer or whether it's uh, for a research opportunity or an internship or any other competitive situation, um, they are not very skilled at that. So at the uh, Stanford University, we've been experimenting with portfolios. And we've been trying to encourage the discipline of students recording their learning and understanding of that learning. In other words, how to self-actualize, how to realize their own uh, experiences and claim their learning. Uh, so this is a very active space. Uh, portfolios typically, they've been around for a decade, maybe longer, but mostly they were in the assessment uh, arena, and we're trying to bring it into a much more active space for learning. Um, so uh, last autumn, uh, Simone uh, visited uh, Stanford University, and we, we um, more or less uh, spitballed the concepts or, of our own uh, electronic portfolio, and um, as a result, um, he and Chineka uh, have decided to embrace uh, the concepts of electronic portfolios. That also includes open badges as evidence of learning. And I turn the floor over to my good friend and colleague, Simone. Can you drive? Yes. Hello, everyone. So this is going to be a bit emotional, but I'm going to take it to go soft on you and myself. It's also going to be, among other things, about soft skills, especially mindfulness. So, go ahead, next slide, let's start. Now, you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Now, to, to some of our American colleagues, this uh, sentence may be familiar, but you know, Alice's is actually a restaurant, and you can really get anything you want there. And, and we did. And this is what we got. So a pickle, some ketchup, a french fries, the back of a business card, some sexy words on it, and this word smartfolio. Now this happened at Alice's restaurant. This is what we got. It was October 4th, uh, 2014. And what we really got, go ahead, Tom, is an inspiration. We got an inspiration to reach some goals which led to wanting to wanting more. We want more, and we aspire to something else. So I want to introduce a couple of concepts that are probably familiar to you, but they certainly became familiar to us, and they've uh, proved to be very important for our project. The first one is lifelong learning. So learning really occurs everywhere, and the life-wide learning. You know, learning occurs anywhere, really. 
And to give you a bit of context of where this initiative that we are driving uh, starts from, I left this slide in Italian because this starts from Italy. And for us, this is really an opportunity to take off. And to take off why? Because we currently operate in a space that is confined within formal education and it only really belongs to the school and university space. We are a B2B shop. We speak to universities and the ministry. I work for a consortium of universities in Italy. But at Alice's, the inspiration that we got was to go a bit beyond that and to expand the space. Go ahead, Tom. You can mount the whole thing. There's another animation. Right. To move wider and longer. And we were inspired to take a leap into a new space which is much bigger, much wider, to go to B2C and to involve a variety of other, of other stakeholders that we uh, never talked to before, including employers and the students, which are citizens to us. And this whole thing made a lot of sense for from us. It was an adjacent space where we could innovate. And we, we started to, I mean, we are solution providers, so we obviously, you know, for any given solution, you have to find a problem that applies, and we went looking for this, and there was a big one, which is known as the skill gap. So essentially, the skill gap, uh, in, uh, at least in McKinsey's uh, research, go ahead, Tom, is saying something like this. So if you ask any universities, or any tr uh, learning institutions, whether their graduates are fit for the market, they have the right skills, they will say, yes, of course they are. But if, but if you ask the same questions to the employers, they would tell you that the graduates don't have the right skills for the market. Wow. Now, we live in a country with 41% youth unemployment. That's a, that's a lot. And this problem is ever more important and, and, and big, huge. Um, so we thought if there was anything that we could really do to help the Italian system to fill this gap. Go ahead. So essentially, as I said, you know, companies have to be able to, to send signals into the market in terms of what competences they need. Then they have to, to verify them, possibly, to assess them, let's say. And on the other end, learning providers need to, to make you know, an offering, an, a, a training offering, a learning offering that is fit, you know, that is preparing the students for the market, for what the market needs. And this is one of the uh, mindfulness moments. So I just told you that you know, we have employers, there's a skill gap, we have employers and learners trying to fight this battle, but then we we reflected, you know, and one of the things that, that we learned in, at Stanford was that the portfolios are most importantly a self-reflection tool. So Tom, for us, was that self-reflection tool in a way, and he inspired us to design a platform that was not a platform to, to immediately bridge the skill gap, but to well, a platform for the aspirers, for people that wanted more for people that wanted to, to dream and to become better human beings, besters. So it's not about getting a job, it's just about becoming better, bester. So what is it? It's just essentially a digital platform that brings together the, the requirements coming from the market, the employers in terms of skills, the learning opportunities, and the aspirations of the citizens. And it's all based on the Mozilla Open Budget architecture. Now, why Mozilla Open Badges? Essentially, we, we thought, you know, this is digital credential made fun and cool. You know, I've been working on standards before, and I have to tell you that this stuff is boring, and I'm not a technical person, but it can get really boring, especially when it doesn't get adopted and it doesn't do the job. But badges are cool, and actually, it's not something entirely new. I mean, it's, it's an old concept, but it's just a new technology. And I think we can all relate to the, the Boy Scout badges, in, in a way, at least I was one, and, and I'm still very proud of my being master of the forest. Uh, those things that I learned, including cooking, have stuck with me, and today one of my biggest passions is definitely food. 
and my, in my next professional reincarnation will be in the food industry, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so let's see how this, this whole thing uh, plays out together. So we have the skills at the heart of this system, and then we have the employers that send signals into this, uh, to this platform. So essentially they're saying what skills you need at that particular time. And then learning providers, they need to, to be able to tailor the offering to those, uh, to those skills, to the skills required by the, the employers. And the learner, which through these learning opportunities acquires competences who eventually you know, stores you know, and, and brings together with him in his own portfolio. We've also thought about a component of this whole thing, which is, we call it the skill match, and I'll get into a bit more details on it, but I don't want to, to spend too much time on it. But essentially, we want to make sure that we know what the market wants, we know what the, uh, what the, what the training institutions offer, so we want to be able to match that together with the competence that being acquired by the, by the citizens. And this is all done based on open badges. Now, what does this do for the learners? Well, it helps to aggregate and organize and, and essentially share the competences. It allows them to access digital content to, why do they go back? They go back because they want to find new stuff that is, that is there for them, that is what they want to, to know more about. And so this could be in any form, publications, courses, MOOCs, study programs, uh, just any digital content. And also accessing exams, sorry. For employers, it allows them to define, to issue badges, so to tell, them, to tell the world what they require, what they need. Ferrari may want to have you know, a, a specific uh, competence, may need a specific competence in fluid dynamics, for example. And they want to be able to send a, a strong signal to the market quick. And the learning providers just need to, uh, to pick up on, on that, and they have to be able to retail their programs, maybe in new ways, maybe in working with the employers. Uh, and not just steering you know, with, with a lot of inertia their own, uh, their current programs in the direction. And so this is how the system works, essentially. So, go ahead, Tom, you can mount this. So, we, you can get training in any kind of context, formal, non-formal, informal. If you, if you like fishing, your dad is a fisherman, you learn how to fish, and then you may, you, you maybe you get a badge for that. You collect all the badges. Go ahead and store them in your backpack or in your passport. Where's Eric? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and share them. So you work, you grow, there's opportunities for you. Now this leads to the portfolio. Now this all, all this stuff, you know, then it ends up your competence in your portfolio. And we have not really made any decision you know, to develop our own platform. We just want to integrate. We just want to, to let users you know, be able to, to use whatever platform they, they want, uh, they like best. But, but essentially, the idea of the portfolio for us was to take these competences, these badges, and surround them by evidence. And that's you know, what we mean to do. And I, I go back one slide, sorry, Tom. Now this uh, badge, nice badge that we have here, it's what we will uh, issue to all the participants and the speakers in uh, this conference. You know, and we will do it using a, a nice system that was developed by, by Eric here, our colleagues, the Open Badge Passport. So if you are here, you'll probably receive one of them, provided you give feedback. <laughs> okay. Now these are some of the, the, the A portfolio platforms that we've been seeing. Uh, again, we were sort of newcomers in the game. Go ahead. This is the education, then we have Mahara. All right. Let's take a look a bit more into the details of, of, of this. So I said companies describe the skills that they're looking for. Essentially. Go ahead. Now, this is uh, what the application will look like. So we, uh, you'll see that there is, sorry, I need to turn around because uh, I need to comment this slide. Uh, essentially, it, it, this is a dashboard where on the, on the right side you will see that Brown Group has endorsed a new badge. It's a global design manager. The red stripe there has your progression into becoming a digital leader. So you have already acquired a competence as a specialist, uh, another one as a specialist, and then you're 
currently working on getting a, uh, a skill on you know, a flash coder, and then you still miss the emoticon maker to become a digital leader. Then learning providers can describe the skills that they uh, provided for by their courses. Go ahead. This is just the, the visual of a badge, the description of a badge, and when this is awarded by the issuer and so on. And these are the criteria that are used to, uh, to assign that badge. And this is just another detail of that. And this is when you obtain a badge, it will pop up in your, in, uh, in your dashboard, you've achieved a new badge, and, and you can share it. Now, I want to draw your attention, there is, a, again, this is not going to be a technical presentation about the platform, again, I want to, I want to stay soft. But the, the idea is that in this platform we'll have, you see down in the bottom, uh, profiles of champions, people that have uh, that reveal their identity and their competences, and so you may uh, look up, you know, uh, love, uh, say Britney Spears as a, as a role model, and you may find out that you know she's an origami master, and and so you just you may may be drawn in, then going out and finding and becoming experts in origami. This is the inspirational part. So why do you want to go back there? Because there is going to be something for you to improve yourself, to become better, in a way. There are learning paths, as well as assessment paths. And so, how is the skill verified? Well, in, in a number of different ways, but uh, first, it could simply be through recognition of prior learning. This is a manual activity, which is done today. You could review the evidence, which is in your portfolio, or you can look for KPIs, like the number of publications that you have online or you know, any other kind of criteria that you can define. Or you can take a computer-based exam, so you're one of those standard exams that certifies that then you have a particular competence. But in Italy, we also run a network of, of test centers, a computer-based test center, where we uh, distribute you know, the most, I guess, common uh, exams from the GMAT to the GRE to the Cisco certifications to language certification and so on. And this is, you know, how widespread it is in Italy. But Bastard is also a marketplace uh, for training and assessment. So some of this content, I mean, companies and, and learning providers can define their skills and, go ahead. They can offer assessment and this all marketplace becomes interesting for, for the citizens, after all. You want to go back there, you want to see what's, what's there. Now, I want to talk about openness and, and, and be quick. How did we think about going about this? So, in Italy, these two themes are brand new. There's no market for them right now. So the idea was to start to raise awareness and create some culture. So we have just rolled out a blog where we're going to, to start doing culture about this. We want to aggregate content. We want to ask and invite any of you who is uh, writing about this to, to write for us and create a bit of a community around this to tell, you know, especially the, uh, our Italian colleagues and, and, and everyone in Italy what it is about and people involved in education. And so this is the home page of the blog. We've been very lucky to also mm, be invited to become a national contact mm, within a, a European project called Badge the EU. Um, of which some of you are also part, and this was really uh, important for us and, uh, and rewarding because uh, this gives us already an opportunity not just to be visible but to interact with experts, with people that have been doing it, that have done it before. And this, even more surprising, uh, as we were conceptualizing this, we had um, contacts with JISC, which is another organization in the UK working on digitizing education, and they were running uh, their uh, co-design challenge on, on, on student services, essentially, to, to define what are the next services, that they, the services that they want to offer to, to their uh, students and to the universities in the future. And one of the things that we were talking about in our in Bester was this, uh, they call it then employability skills matching service, where based on the open badges, we're going to match the required skills, you know, with, with, with the one-on-one. And and this is new, and this is going to be a long week uh, uh, for me, a, a very interesting one. Um, we started to talk about this, and we have raised and, and found the interest of the ministry in Italy. 
uh, we were going to have an event, a dissemination event, to, and, and we, we invited Tom uh, on his trip to Europe to extend it and come through to, to Italy to talk about portfolios. And all of a sudden, uh, now the ministry uh, decided that they wanted in on this. And so on Friday, uh, we'll be hosted by the Ministry of University and Research in Rome, and we're going to run uh, a, a workshop on open badges and a portfolio. Thank you. And again, this is another m m a mindful moment. So uh, there are many attempts to do this thing everywhere. We all want to solve the, the skill gap. But how is this different? At least how it is different in my mind, and how is it different in the way we look at it? Now, the, the, <laughs> this last slide, no. sorry, can you go back to the, wait, hold on. So I, I, I gave some thought to it and, and this was, so Abe Hester is, is timeless learning, is personal development and career pathways. It closes the gap between you and yourself. It prompts your walk of life, and it just knows you better. Now, this is the quintessential summary. You know, when I, when I think about this project, this is what I want to look at it as. And also, uh, we just essentially want to, to give a, a tool for people to become better human beings. Long. Now, this whole thing is in the works. We started on October 4th you know, in, uh, at Alice's restaurant. It's seven months yesterday that we're working on it. And we're going to go live on July the 4th. <laughs> and so <laughs> we really hope that you know, the 4th may be with us on that. <laughs> and, I, and I hope this is going to be, uh, at least this is you know, our target, and look forward to, to speak about this again to you in the future. Now, there is one more thing that I want to show, and it's a little video. I have a last message for you all. So since we last met in DC, I've had the opportunity to travel a couple of times to northern Iraq, the region known as Kurdistan. You're all well traveled, but I suspect almost none of you has been there yet. A region heavily affected by the war, the world's most advanced front against ISIS, offensively through their Peshmerga forces and defensively by hosting hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people fleeing their hometowns raided by the caliphate. As you can imagine, I did not go there either to join the ISIS foreign fighters or on a family getaway. We were called by the Ministry of Education in KRG to support a strategic roadmap aiming at implementing the Bologna process principles and focusing on quality assurance through the development of a national assessment procedure. I am committed to bring them to the GD community next year. So, the trip 
actually taught me a lot about fundamental human traits, like tolerance, empathy, resilience, diversity. These are the global challenges of today, but at the same time, the global skills of the future. Moreover, this trip also helped me recover a deep sense of purpose for what we do every day and stimulated a powerful self-reflection that I want to share with all of you now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're nothing but developers. Some of us may develop information systems, other public policies, but collectively, we're all developers of bridges. And our architectural blueprint is the Groningen Declaration. But today, today we're also foreign fighters. And education is our selected weapon of mass construction. The only disruptive power we have at our disposal to win the war against paper and to make a positive and peaceful impact in this bloody planet. Dear friends, evil hides in the shadow of ethnicity, religion, location, what have you. But good is always manifest. By giving competence of recognition, we shed light onto the good we all have within and make it even more manifest and can share it as digital credentials with the whole world. We signed the Running Declaration not to get a badge for it, but to make history together. So please, let's join forces in developing the greatest bridge ever built, the bridge that will connect Groningen to everywhere else, passing by Bologna, of course. Thank you, Herman. I don't know if you're here. Thank you, Victoriano, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. ramifications for your personal development, also some dynamics that may come out, like the marketplace for training and assessment, although it's not the initial purpose, it will be a, a, a strong side effect once this is up and running, and, and similar systems will be up, up and running. So uh, a fascinating example of how to, to valorize what individuals are doing. We have to move on because there will be a plenary session in this very room starting in one minute, which allows for one question. Ta-da! Who has the one question? <laughs> I have a question. Do I want to close the gap between me and myself? <laughs> Maybe I don't want to. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it over lunch, over dinner. A book for our speakers. <laughs>